Have you ever had a dream? Ah! Where am I? What was that? Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I just had a nightmare. For most of our history as humans, our dreams have been considered an oracle of fate, a warning or a comforter, or a messenger from the gods. How do you do, fellow kids? All right, Aristotle. I'm here to understand why I'm dreaming of losing all my teeth, not about the oracle of fate. Anyway, back to business. Haven't we all been there, dreaming the most bizarre things ever? Forgetting your pants. That's one, an oldie but a goodie. Pissing and not knowing whether you're in your bed or your bathroom. Man, that's a dangerous one. And the classic, that one moment of you and your ex that just keeps replaying in your head no matter how hard you try and shake it out of you. You simply cannot, which is probably symbolizing that one day, just one day, she might come back to me. Who hurt you, bro? For centuries on end, scholars as far back as Plato and Xu Ji, kings, priests, and artists have spent their entire lives dwelling on dreams. Dumbledore disapproves. What? What? What does what that even... It does not do well to live on dreams and forget to live, ring a bell. And what events are dreams? Are you just going to use metaphors and speculative science? Okay, get this. On average, we spend about two hours every night dreaming. So over a lifetime of 80 years, that makes it 10 years spent dreaming. A typical night of sleep is divided into several cycles. During the first stage, you start to relax and your breathing slows down as you move from awake to sleep. Your body temperature decreases, which actually makes you sleepy and puts your body in a state of rest. Following that, you move into the deep sleep stage, which is distinguished by the brain wave pattern known as delta waves. The rapid eye movement, or REM sleep stage, begins after that. Your eyes just keep flickering around and your breathing gets faster, and this is where you dream. Oh yeah, I remember reading about REM stages and that all animals, including our pets, go through it. Yep, in all probability, your dog dreams too. Hopefully not of that time when you could have petted them, but chose not to. Anyways, dreams have usually had a spiritual connotation throughout most of human history. Ancient Egyptians were the flag bearers of telling you what your dreams meant. While some interpretations were fairly straightforward, like climbing a mountain signifying overcoming an obstacle, a few others were, um, weird? For instance, dreams of brutal death were considered good omens. What now? But mirrors are where we draw the line. Mirrors were a big bad omen though, being considered portals to spirits. It also says here if I dream of pouring my piss into the Nile, my harvest will be bountiful? Oh yeah, those scrolls are pretty fun. But the study of dreams really gathered steam in the early 20th century by one of the most hated psychologists, Sigmund. Sigmund Freud believed that dreams are the royal road to the unconscious mind, and act as a window into repressed desires, fears, and unresolved conflicts. Freud thought dreams are your hidden wishes coming true in a disguised way. Freud said dreams hide their real meaning so our minds don't get upset. Basically, your subconscious mind censors your dreams to make sure you can handle them. Freud had a special way of understanding dreams. He believed that dreams show hidden thoughts and feelings. To understand them, he asked people to talk freely about whatever came to mind when they thought about their dreams. This helped him discover hidden conflicts and desires, giving clues to solve psychological problems. Dreams are often most profound when they seem the most crazy, Freud said. Yeah, maybe if he had dialed down the cocaine and the obsession with sex, it would seem less crazy. Hey, the man was a pioneer who revolutionized his field. He was bound to get a lot of things wrong. All of us often wonder if we can harvest the ideas found in our dreams, or if we can stimulate our dreams so that they work on a solution we want. But it's like trying to catch smoke, or more like holding on to the idea that your ex will return one day. <laughs> this was unnecessary? But artists such as Salvador Dali and Rene Margrethe and filmmakers such as Igmar Bergman and Federico Fellini are some of the masters that breathe onto this thin cliff between consciousness and unconsciousness. They have tapped into the sleeping wasteland of existential fears, eccentric happiness, sexual anxiety, demonic imaginations, and impossible wonders. Hmm, it was revealed to me in a dream, should be allowed as a valid citation on my research paper too. Well, one of the greatest organic chemists of all time, August Kekule, will certainly agree, and Carl Jung would back you up too. Carl Jung expanded upon Freud's work while also differing radically. Fun fact, Jung was actually Freud's apprentice, and then became his biggest rival. To Jung, dreams were not symbols, but whole self-sufficient structures arising from the unconscious. Jung stated that dreams are messages sent up from the unconscious. All of humanity is linked to share experiences, symbols, and archetypes that are inherited and universally present in the human psyche. Jung wrote, It is as if our consciousness were a ship on the great sea of the unconscious. 
The fate of the ship is to some extent determined by the sea. Whoa, that's deep. In essence, dreams act like windows into the unconscious, so by understanding our dreams, we can learn about hidden thoughts and feelings that we have. Jung also talks about inherited archetypes, which are basically universal symbols in our dreams. After all, I think that all of us once dreamed about flying or falling. One interesting universal symbol that Jung talked about is the Ouroboros, which is basically a symbol of a snake eating his own tail. This represents the cycle of nature, life, death, rebirth, and the unity between all things. In the winter of 1862, August Kekule was in Belgium obsessing over the possible structure of benzene. Unlike other hydrocarbons, benzene has the same number of hydrogen and carbon atoms, 6 and 6. What strange molecule structure could let these atoms fit together? Kekule dozed off wondering about the answer to this confounding question. Dancing atoms and molecules turned into a series of snakes, then suddenly one of the snakes coiled around and bit its tail, like the ancient symbol of the Ouroboros. Voila, the structure of benzene was found. It indeed was revealed to him in a dream. Interestingly, scientists have decided to move away from what are dreams to finding the benefits of dreams. The activation synthesis theory says the brain turns random neural impulses into logical stories using memories, emotions, and desires to make sense of them. Rather than suppressed wants or hidden meanings, dreams are seen as the brain's attempt to organize neural activity. That is just so unromantic. Ah, uh, looks like I made a dreamer out of you. I agree, and experiments show that our dreams are not random. Consider you are learning something new or have an experience for the first time in your life, or go to a street you've never been to before. You will only live through this day once. These experiences are fragile and not permanent in our short-term memory. Only when our daily experiences are replayed in our dreams can they remain in our long-term memory. Dreams have also repeatedly proved to be handy outlets for problem solving. During sleep, the mind keeps working on your problems, gaining creative insights and new perspectives by using memories and subconscious triggers. Even Einstein had a clever trick which he used to boost his creativity. He used to sit in a chair holding keys. As he started to fall asleep, his hand would relax, dropping the keys and waking him up. This exact moment between being awake and asleep is one of the moments where the mind is at its peak creativity. So by waking up at that moment, Einstein could catch new, creative ideas that popped into his mind during that short nap. Bro is crazy crazy. I know, but this subconscious processing often lets individuals awake with clarity or new insights. So you are saying that when I'm sleeping, I'm actually just being productive? That is the best thing I've ever heard. Dreams are also credited with building trauma healing. Okay, I'm sold now. Dreams might have been an evolutionary necessity too. Our visual cortex gives us the gift of sight. However, if we were to blindfold ourselves, we very quickly see that our senses gradually begin to dominate within the hour. Perhaps dreaming evolved as a way to keep the visual cortex active during our lengthy nights of darkness and sleep. The threat simulation theory suggests that nightmares let us practice or cope with dangerous events by replaying our worst fears. The brain is trying to condition us to survive threatening experiences in a safe environment. Perhaps one day we will have definitive answers to every riddle the dream will throw at us. Until then, happy dreaming. Also, if you do not wish nightmares upon me, Please don't forget to encourage me with your likes, comments, and subscriptions.